God, that felt so good. Doesn't get much better than that for me. I just love feeling that contact. And you know, this might be controversial, but I think the best feeling on earth is hitting a solid flushed iron shot off of a tight line, watching your ball land right next to the pin. That's what brings us all back. That's why we grind and grind. But don't worry, if bad ball striking is your fault, I've got the fix. Thanks for joining us on the Golf Fix at Stony Brook West, a championship 18-hole golf course in Winter Garden, Florida, less than a 30-minute drive from the Orlando airport. And we're talking ball striking. When I think great ball striking, what I think is total control of the golf ball, but even more importantly, total control of the distance. When I think great ball strikers, some of the names that come to mind, Ben Hogan, Lee Trevino, Mo Norman, Tiger Woods, and more recently, Will Zalatoris, all terrific ball strikers, total control of their golf ball. And when we're talking about ball striking, we're talking about solid contact. Now, there's a few different types of contact, and what I want to kind of go into are the two primary ones, and then the third kind of lesser known one. So when I'm talking ball striking, I'm talking about both what's called vertical strike. So bottom of the face would be a low strike, center of the face would be obviously a solid strike, and top of the face would be a poor strike. So the vertical contact, and then also the horizontal. So a shank would be a poor contact horizontally, as would a toe hit. And then finally, let's talk about what's called spin loft or the compression at impact. So essentially, when you're hitting the ball correctly and the shaft's leading forward with your iron, you're generally gonna have a lower spin loft than those who tend to scoop the ball up in the air. So even if you're hitting in the center of the face, those who have a proper impact, a little bit lower spin loft than those who have a higher one are gonna feel like they hit it a lot more solid. So here's a great initial drill that I love working on the bottom of the arc for vertical contact. So how this works, I have five different golf balls here and I teed them up different height. So this first one right here, I teed it up pretty high, almost about the height I would hit a driver. The next one I teed up about like a three wood. Then this one is just like a typical iron shot on a par three. Little bit teed up, but not a lot. Finally, just a ball sitting on the ground as if I'm in the fairway. And then as you can see here, one that's sitting in divot. All situations you may face, however, it's gonna help you understand where the center of the face is from a vertical orientation, so you can hit the center of the face more often. So this is more of a skill-based drill to try to get better and better at hitting the center of the club face. So here's how it works. You're gonna take your setup and you're gonna start on the high one. So if I swing and the club gets too low, I'm gonna go right underneath that ball. So the idea here is to be able to control where the bottom of this arc here is when I hit the shot. So I don't want it to get too low or obviously too high. Hit that one great, love that ball flight. Nice and high as you'd probably expect. So I controlled the bottom of that arc really well even though the ball is way up in the air. I didn't hit the ground. Now I'm gonna move to kind of that three wood height, take my setup, and I gotta control this. I don't wanna take too much turf or any turf at all because then I'll hit on the top of the club. Another great one, felt good. Definitely pretty easy to do that. Finally, I'm gonna go to just that typical, kind of that three, par three height, you know, just barely teed up, take my setup. Same general feel. I might take a little more turf on this one. Great, divot after the ball, felt good. All right, so this is just, I'm in the middle of the fairway. So I'm going from high to low. I gotta understand where the bottom of my arc is. And in this case, it has to be after the ball, but I do wanna make sure I take some turf. Felt really good there. A little lower on that one, like that flight a lot. And then finally, sitting in a divot, I really gotta make sure that I'm coming down with a descending angle of attack, I'm hitting down on the ball, and I'm hitting lower than I usually would. So, good setup. Try to take a pretty big divot after the ball. Since there's no ground there, it won't actually be as big as it feels. Really good, felt good. Definitely hit more down on that one. So, understanding arc depth, where the club is bottoming out, will really help control the vertical contact on the club face and eliminate heavy shots, low on the face, thin shots, all of the above. So. Next drill that I really, really like, this is actually an old lead better drill. It's kind of the visual of having a brick wall to your left side. So I want you to take your setup and kind of imagine that there's a wall right here. And the idea is hitting into a firm lead side. And so what I see with a lot of players who struggle with vertical contact is as they come down in general, their body weight and their pressure is too far back. So they're about to hit behind the ball. When this happens, either they do hit behind it or they pull away with their body, pull away with their arms, or really a combination of both. So let's try to avoid this at all costs. 
understand kind of this wall drill. So you're gonna take your setup. And what I really want you to feel is not only that your lower body is gonna get into this wall, but also your left shoulder, your lead shoulder is gonna move into it too. And then your hands are also gonna be a little bit forward. So you're gonna imagine this wall, you're gonna hit into a firm lead side. You're gonna go back, boom, hit the wall. Back, hit the wall. And you're kind of seeing how my upper center, my lower center kind of initially at least working together and not lower only. So a lot of times I'll see players where the lower will go forward, but the upper will go back. Definitely a recipe to hit behind it. So vertical contact, it's important that you're able to get more of a forward look here and then rotate into impact. So I'm gonna demonstrate that one more time. I got my wall. I'm gonna break into that wall. I'm not gonna go through it, but I'm just gonna hit into it. Boom. And now I'm ready to hit this solid and straight. God, that felt so good, even better than the ones before it. So absolutely love that wall drill. The feeling of moving into a firm lead side, fantastic for getting that ball first, then ground contact, making sure that you're hitting the ball solid. Now, next thing I wanna talk about, great social media drill from my friend Jeff Smith, Radar Golf Pro, super good for getting those guys that are you know, kind of too shallow, maybe the arms and club drop behind them too much, can't take a divot, two inside out. So how this is gonna work, what I want you to do, I'm gonna go ahead and grab an alignment stick. And what I want you to try to do here is I want you to get the feel of your arms getting in front of your body uh, coming down. If your arms get kind of stuck behind your body and your body doesn't turn properly, it's very hard to hit a good shot. So you're gonna kind of put this in between your belt loops, kind of an even amount on each side. And then what you're also gonna do once you take your setup is take a second alignment stick and you're gonna use this for your hand path. So what I see with a lot of players when they're hitting bad shots and they're too shallow is as they work into the ball, their hands kind of work down behind them and the club kind of works too far out. So what I want us to do is I want us to take our setup and really kind of get the feeling of finishing under this stick. So our hand path is gonna feel like it's kind of moving a little bit more down and left. And as we come down, if our legs kind of work improperly, we early extend, we rotate too early, you can kind of see I get stuck. So we're gonna pump this a few times and then hit. If anything, it's gonna feel a little bit steep and maybe like a small cut, but it's great for those of you who are too shallow, too far behind and struggling with a lot of thin and fat shots. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take my setup. I'm gonna practice this back, arms down in front of me, under the stick, back, arms in front of me, under the stick. Let's go ahead and hit this one. I'll start off real smooth and slow. So definitely a little bit more on top of it there. Started a hair left, faded a little bit to the right, but that's kind of the feeling that I want you to have. After you do that, you can go ahead and put the stick down, try to feel the same thing. I'm gonna leave this stick up because it just gives me a great reference for where my hands are traveling. And the idea is just kind of getting that feeling of the hand staying in front of your chest. You don't want your hands to get way too far behind you. Again, you're gonna kind of scoop it and get two inside out. So arms in front of the chest, rotate down and left. Let's go ahead and flush this one. Felt even better. Love this stick here. Great awareness for where my hands are. Excellent, excellent drill. So try those drills. It'll help you hit it next to the pin a lot more often. And coming up, we're talking horizontal contact, toe, heel, even the dreaded sh 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 I don't even want to say it. Stay tuned. Oh. And I have to say, that is the unmentionable. God, love the feeling of these. One of my favorite things about the P770s is just how absolutely amazing they feel when I hit it in the center of the face. To purchase these irons and the rest of the new Stealth line, visit TaylorMadeGolf.com.